going to talk about uh, what is this blackout period or cooling period. Okay, so this word we used to hear uh, during implementation project. Just before go live and during the cutover time, we used to get some uh, period of uh, blackout, two days, one day, off day also there will be, and four or five days also certain business can provide. But uh, they will select certain key transactions. They have to do it. They cannot stop in their whole system. So, so certain things also we have to make a plan. So let them do the business and they monitor it. And then we have to add into our system. So these kind of things happen. So here mainly I collected uh, the theoretical data, how we can understand about the, what is this blackout period? If you see here uh, in an implementation, uh, SAP implementation project, the blackout period is a crucial time, crucial time frame during the cutover phase when the legacy system, the old system being replaced is shut down and the new SAP system takes over. During this period, the, there is a temporary halt in regular business operations as no transaction, new transactions are allowed in the old system and all activities are migrated to the new SAP environment. So business can uh, give one day or time or two days time. So most of the operation they will stop for one day or two days. And some of the um, activities like um, they will do in offline. So we have to add into our system. So such kind of a planning also happen based on the multiple projects. Like I mentioned that we have a different, different projects. So uh, based on the projects, uh, certain give two days, certain transaction cannot be stopped. Still they have to run. Uh, even if you say they're manufacturing companies and all, they cannot stop three days for us, right? So they might give certain point of time, maybe Sunday, uh, afternoon, uh, one o'clock to till Monday off day. So like that also they give or else Saturday night, 8 p.m. to enter Sunday, they will be holiday and Monday morning, 10 o'clock, we have to complete the activity. So day and night, uh, also the team will work for the, doing the cutover, upload, uh, uploading all the transactions, making uh, a required configuration, okay, required configuration, we could have moved little in advance. Sometimes what happened, um, this downtime, we also call like the word called downtime also complete system uh, will be stopped during these activities, certain kind of activities and other systems are working, right? So you have to coordinate with all the teams. So these kind of challenges, we need to address it. So key characteristics of uh, blackout period, if you see that transitional period. So the, what is this transitional period? It marks the transition from the old system to the new system. So the old system to new system, that transition is there. Right? Till now, old system is running. We are doing everything in our uh, quality system, uh, earlier development and quality. Even we came to production to move the technical goal, certain configuration things we have moved it after completion of regression testing. If there is already other companies are using. If it is a fresh system, no issues. We can move everything in technical. Business goal, we will plan exactly the day where we are going to decide it. So no new transactions, no new trans business transactions are recorded in the legacy system during this time. So the two days, uh, they don't post anything in their current system because we are making our system ready for them to use in live. If they're not able to cope up, then uh, we help, IT team will help to make some entries like creating uh, bulk POs or bulk transactions in that one to two days of uh, corrosion will be there, right? So during that point of time, we help them. Data migration, this is when final data cleansing, validation and transfer activities occur from the world system to new system. So like I was mentioning in uh, multiple videos about the cutover, right? So data migration programs must be tested well in advance during UAT time, keep it ready. And the data cleansing we have to do for during UAT time, at least 80% of the data should be provided by the business. Even 100% is also, it will be good. So the data cleansing verification business has to do during UAT what kind of data is good or bad, any changes, changing of unit of measure, changing of certain uh, valuation classes or changing of gross weight, net weight. These too many things will happen from UAT to the cutover time. So those parts need to be taken care. But here in this blackout period, data migration means we are going to upload it only. So at this point of time, you want to do the cleansing, validation, verification, and all means the blackout period is not at all sufficient. So all these information, all these uh, activities happen well in advance. So that's what I wanted to uh, convey. Testing and validation. 
So when it comes to testing and validation, rigorous testing and validations are performed to ensure the new SAP system is functioning correctly and maintained. So this is a pure generic point. In the blackout period, we don't uh, make uh, testing and validation and all. So before going to blackout period, we need to do this one. So that's our key characteristics. Before that, we know how to make it ready and uh, do those things. Business impact. While the blackout period is essential for a smooth transition, it can temporarily disrupt the business operations. Yes, one day or one and a half day business as planned shutdown needs to be planned. And that's why they select the date where that any public holidays are there, or where the, there is a weekend, maybe the less, less activities happen so that they can manage to stop it. So these kind of things also they plan. So what is the importance of a blackout period? Uh, it's a clean data migration. It allows for a clean, uh, controlled migration of data uh, to the legacy system to SAP. So whatever data, everything was properly made that will be uploaded during the blackout period. So minimize disruptions uh, by having a dedicated period of the transition, it minimizes the risk of data inconsistencies and errors that could occur if both the systems were running concurrently. So what happens, uh, someone will say that one, uh, these three POs figured in uh, old system and two POs created in current system, then it may generate confusion and uh, and maybe five POs will be again created in this new system. So the vendor will get two purchase orders for the same material, two invoices will be created for the same quantity. So these kind of uh, descriptions will be avoided by keeping this blackout period so that only one system will made ready, make it ready for everything to do in line, in online without having any impact on the old system. Ensure system readiness. It provides a final window for thorough testing and validation of the new system. So system, it provides a final window. Uh, so the blackout period uh, to keep it like uh, how we are going to uh, make system readiness to verify all configurations are moved properly or not. We'll have a checklist in the blackout period before doing the cutover things. Ensure that all configuration, everything is done. Then master data mode, client specific things you need to complete. Otherwise, if you, without maintaining number ranges, if you start uploading. So before blackout period, if there is a chance, if there is no current systems, it was more peaceful because you could move the configurations programs well in advance. Blackout period is, let's take it example, of August 26th to 28th is the blackout period. But the configuration, everything could be moved in the August 1st week itself. Then uh, programs, everything will be moved. And August 15th, 20th, by 20th, we would complete the activity of client specific settings, like number ranges or, uh, or partner profile maintenance, all these things could be completed by August 15th or 20th. So we have six more days. So the final cleansing verification master data uploads can be done. So it was a peaceful, but the main challenge will be if already in that system, there was other companies are available at that point of time, it is too sensitive that we cannot move certain programs well in advance because of the impact on other things. So those all, need to be taken care. So what is the duration? Uh, the blackout period uh, length varies between uh, days to week. Okay, in my experience, mostly two days, three days, so like that we had seen that blackout period, even in one of the projects, it is not even a day. So they had given from uh, Saturday night to uh, Monday morning 8 a.m. operation should be in, uh, ha should happen in SAP. The, that's how we manage that. So planning and communication, yeah, careful planning and communication are essential to manage the blackout period effectively. All stakeholders must be informed well in advance about the planned downtime and impact on business operations. So we have to inform, otherwise they, they might plan some contract employees to do certain activities. Those kind of things can be avoided and also inform to the members to utilize any of the, their leaves or uh, anything or the ad hoc things, anything they can plan during that point of time. So overall, the blackout period is a critical phase in an SAP implementation project. While it involves temporary disruptions, it's essential for a successful transition to the new SAP system and ensures data integrity and system readiness. I hope this has given you a good understanding about this blackout period. I explained in my cutover period things and all. So here are some certain things like testing and validation and all. It's like a one high level sentence to understand that the program and the data validation, everything was okay or not. There's a quick checks. We are not going to do the testing of end to end within the short time of time. During the blackout period, our main focus will be 
are doing the master data uploads and completing the cutover data, uh, all open POs, open sales orders, and uh, if any other open related financial things, everything need to be made it ready so that the business can do their activities once uh, the Monday morning 8 a.m. they can come and do their activities. So that's what the thing is planned. So I hope uh, this blog will be helpful for you. And I'm trying to make certain videos by using our blogs itself because I started making the blogs again. So making more blogs, I was doing uh, in and out uh, somewhere, but I will, I'm planning to start more blogs so that we can use a similar blog for our video also so that you can uh, documents because we get in Udemy, you can access the both documents and videos, but in uh, YouTube, unfortunately, you can access only videos. So the people sometimes message to me that one, where can I access that document which you used in the video? So I hope if I use my blogs for making the videos, uh, you can come and study. That also will be helpful. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. And also the blog also is going to be known to the many, many new people. So there are uh, plenty of documents are there and uh, please come and watch. And you can see the categories you can utilize for Excel skills or general videos, latest YouTube, S4HANA, IDOCS, handling unit management, any whatever topic you wanted to learn, you just come and select the category and uh, go through. Thanks again for your time. I hope this video has given you a good understanding.